it's Belle. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a book haul, of course. Start with the books that were sent to me. We have two this time. The author had reached out, Luna Graves, and the first in her Witches of Peculiar series, Double Double Twins in Trouble. This comes out in July. I think it's July 9th, but in July. I'm so excited. It's a quick read. She sent me a lovely note. This was rolled up on the other side. And she made me a cute little bookmark. And she made it herself, so I love that. Peculiar Pennsylvania it is a perfectly normal place to live, or at least that's what the humans think, and the supernatural community hiding in plain sight wants it to stay that way. Though that will be much more difficult now that the Maleficent twins manifested their powers over the summer. Bella and Dee Maleficent's magic is powerful but unpredictable, so when Dee accidentally sets the classroom ablaze on their first day at the school for supernatural students and Bella summons a massive storm cloud to put out the flames, they land in, in the principal's office, which is the last place they want to be. The twins try to salvage the day by making new friends, but when another spell of Bella's goes awry, their reputations at school aren't the only thing on the line, and failing to fix things will threaten the existence of every goblin, vampire, and ghost in peculiar. This sounds so good. I'm so excited for this. Thank you so much. And Alma Book 1, The Wind Rises by Timothy de Fonbel. I reached out and asked if I would be interested, and I said yes, because it sounds so amazing. And there's artwork throughout, like illustrations throughout, and since it's not a final copy, I don't know if I'm allowed to show illustrations, but... It is 1786. Alma lives with her family in an African valley. She spends her days exploring their blissful homeland, but everything changes when her little brother finds a secret way out of the valley. Alma sets out to find him, but soon has to face terrible dangers in a continent ravaged by the violence and horrors of the slave trade. The journey to bring her brother home quickly becomes a thrilling adventure to save herself, her family, and the memory of her people. Meanwhile in Lisbon, Joseph Mars, a petty thief who dreams of finding a pirate's treasure, manages to get himself on board the slave ship, the sweet Amelie, whose captain, Lazarus Gardell, is also hunting for a treasure. The destinies of Alma and Joseph become intertwined both on land and at sea in Timothée de Fondel's thrilling adventure novel. From Africa to Europe and the Caribbean, this first installment in the three book series tells an unforgettable story of hope, perseverance, courage, and love. And this author's series, the Toby Alone series, has been published in 27 languages, so I'll have to look up that series too and see if it sounds like something I would like, but I know this definitely does. It says it comes out August 9th this year, so very excited. Thank you so much. And then next, I got Seed by Carol Lewis in the U.S. edition, but I had also ordered the U.K. edition. I love them both, but I made myself pick one to keep, <laughs> and so I picked the U.K. version, and so I'm not going to read the synopsis or anything, but... I've already shown this and this one has illustrations I don't remember if the US one did but that I don't think it did so I wanted to show you all of this this is the one I'm going to keep and then I have the paperback of this series and I wasn't going to get the hardbacks but I saw this one on Amazon marked down it wasn't even a sale like sometimes you can just catch them really cheap it was marked down to like two dollars and something and I love this series so much so I picked it up The Clockwork Crow by Katherine Fisher this is such an amazing series, and I love these covers, so I'm just going to keep my eye on the other two when they come out. I think the second one's out in the U.S. edition, but I don't know about the third one, so I was very excited to see that, because that's the only way I was going to get it, because I'm trying to be better. <laughs> and then, like, a picture book, Laurel Snyder and Dan Santat. I think I have books by Laurel Snyder, and I have, I just recently got a graphic novel by Dan Santat, so that excited me that they did something together and this cover just uh, it's endlessly ever after pick your path to countless fairy tale endings and fairy tale and just artwork and the naked hardback is the same as the dust jacket get a lot of picture books but I do love illustrators so much and illustrations that there are some that I have wanted and gotten and there's still more out there that I do want just because the art is just so beautiful I'm very happy that I finally got this and I think this is the only graphic novel and it was an anticipated release so I'm not gonna uh, read the synopsis but it's Source Line by Sylvia Dewey hope I'm saying that right and it's just a short quick one but the art Beautiful. 
so we're happy to add that to my collection. And then next we'll go with the sequels that I got. The first two are not are from series I haven't started yet, but they're UK, so I try to pick them up so I don't forget about them because they're not expensive as hardback US sequels. And I would like, especially this one, I'd like to binge very soon because it's a little bit longer. But the second in the Accidental Wizard series, A Peculiar Problem by Kimberly Polly. Illustrations like this all throughout. It just sounds so incredible. And then this is the second in this trilogy. But I think it's a companion trilogy to the Last Chance Hotel trilogy, if I'm not mistaken. I think I heard that. So I can't wait to binge them all because I love my sister's in Monogre. But this is the Poison Pie mystery. This chapter starts with the. I mean, there's a cat. <laughs> like a part two, and there's the cat. So that just sounds incredible. Then the second book, this is a sequel to Wonderscape. Okay, these next three I have read, and these are the next in the series that I need to read. I loved Wonderscape by Jennifer Bell, so I'm so excited to read Legend Legendarium. I just love all of her books that I've read, and she's just such an amazing author, so I can't wait to continue in this world. And then a US, I know this came out in the UK too, though, but I have the US first book, so I got the UK, I mean the US sequel to Kiki Calera Conquers a Curse by Sangu Mandana. I love the first book so much. I love Kiki and I related so much to her. I like her mental health stuff that she has. And I just related so much. And then the art and then the mythology, just, just so many great things. So I cannot wait to continue this. And then Firestorm, the third in the Bright Storm Adventure series by Vashti Hardy. I think this is going to be the last. I'm not sure, but I think it's going to be. And that makes me so sad. I love these books so much. Vashti Hardy is such an amazing writer. And I love me some steampunk and she always has some steampunk and like there's such a steampunk element to the books that I just eat up. So I cannot wait. And if this is the last one, I'm not sure, but if it is, I'm so sad. <laughs> but I know she'll keep writing books and that makes me so happy. I can't wait to just continue to read all her books. Reading Bell coming back because I just saw the sequel that I haven't hauled yet. But as soon as it got here, I put it in here because it's the fifth book and I finished the fourth book. So I jumped right into this the fifth and final book in the Omni Pandava series. This is Arasha and the Nectar of Immortality by Roshani Chosky. Loved it. Love this whole series. It's such a great series. Wanted to show you all this one too. Yeah, that's all the sequels and everything else. So we'll get to the standalones or first in the series, whatever they may be. One of my searches, I found this and I'm so excited. It sounds amazing and it's beautiful. Garden Ghoulies, The Savior of Faldun by Kevin Gold. Cool. Join Aber Abraham Lincoln Horowitz on an adventure that will change his world. Abe is a bullied kid from Buffalo, New York with an unsatisfying home life who looks forward every year to his summers in Chipper Hollow with his grandma, and this summer is no different, until it is. He can hardly contain his excitement on the last day of school. Neither the constant thrashing by the school bullies or his longtime crush actually speaking to him can take his mind off of Chipper Hollow today. However, this particular summer, Abe finds out the hard way that Chipper Hollow holds more secrets than he ever knew. As he sets out on an adventure like no other under the forest floor to save a race of small subterranean creatures called the Gaeltica, or as Abe calls them, ghoulies. Teaming up with his new friend Joe, Lita, and Ozzy, Abe sets out to defend Faldoon and all the ghoulies from certain doom at the hands of Valdric and the Falcon. That sounds great. I love a new friendship, dynamic growing, and then going on an adventure together. And just, I just like the way it sounds. It sounds like, gonna be a, it sounds like a good summer read, too. Twelfth by Janet Key. People aren't always what they play. 12-year-old Marin is sure theater camp isn't for her. Theater camp is for loud, confident, artsy people. People are like her older sister, Haley, the last person Marin wants to think about. And her cinema-obsessed and marine marrying rockmate, Theo. But when a prank goes wrong, Marin gets drawn into the hunt for a diamond ring that, legend has it, is linked to the camp's namesake, Charlotte Charlie Goodwin, a promising director in Blacklist-era Hollywood. When Marin connects the clues to Shakespeare's Twelfth Night, she and her new friends are all searching through lightning booths, orchestra pits, and c costume storages, discovering the trail and dodging camp counselors. But they're not the only ones searching for the ring, and with the growing threat of camp closing forever, they're almost out of time. I like the theater aspect and the mystery. I don't know if this is like a summer theater camp or what it is, but if it is, that'd be like a great summer element to it. The theater camp and then all this, and just the mystery and friendships. I love a good camp story, regardless summer or not, so I'm very excited for this. this does sound like a good summer story. Best Friends, Bikinis, and Other Summer Catastrophes by Christy Wyant. Wyant? I 
have no idea how to say the last name. I'm just going to keep butchering it. So there it is. Alex has always known her best friend and next door neighbor Will will be there for her. That's how it, that's just how it's always been. Until a girl from the pool named Rebecca comes over to them and says hi. Now Will is changing his clothes, restyling his hair, and breaking all the summer plans, and Alex is not happy about it. Every summer, she and Will come up with a new challenge. This year, it's a treehouse. Now Alex is grabbing summer jobs and keeping tabs on the new girl, hoping that by completing their treehouse, she can keep from losing her best friend and her summer from falling apart. It's like a great friendship story and a good summer read, so very excited. And then Beast Heart Slayer by A.H. Blade. I think these are connected to the Beast Quest series. I don't think you have to read those. Those are real short though, so they just seem more younger. These are just thicker and they just seem more, you know, normal middle grade. Rebellion is brewing in the land of the new kind beast. Jonas, a human boy cursed with the memories of a tra terrible tragedy, is fighting to escape an unjust prison sentence by tracking down fugitives. His fearsome battle skills have won him the nickname Slayer. Jonas' secret powers come from his mysterious connection with Seth, a bloodthirsty Wyvern, whose soul is tied to Jonah's own, yet fights against him. Lana is a lizard kind determined to save her once noble family who have fallen on hard times. At the Emperor's court, the powerful order of the true are determined to crush a human uprising, and Lana's magical ability draws their leader's attention. A property tells of Jonas and Lana's importance, and when a powerful magical object is stolen, they are thrown together. As they confront the sinister forces battling for control of the four kingdoms, will they meet their death or discover their destiny? I'm so excited. That sounds incredible. And this is one I've had on my UK wish list forever and then I saw it coming out in the US but then it was just out of stock forever so I ended up getting it used from there anyway it's a UK edition so I still get the sticker off but it was a better price than I've ever seen it. Short Knife by Ellen Caldecott. And I'm gonna have to edit in here and be reading the synopsis because the sticker is right in the middle of the synopsis. Hey now it's editing bell. I'm gonna read the synopsis for The Short Knife. It is the year 454 AD. The Roman Empire has withdrawn from Britain, throwing it into the chaos of the Dark Ages. Maya has been kept safe by her father and her sister, Hoff. But when Saxon warriors arrive at their farm, the family is forced to flee to the hills where British warlords lie in wait. And Maya survived in a dangerous world where speaking her mother tongue might be deadly, and where even the people she loves the most can't be trusted. Oh, this just sounds so incredible. I've wanted it for so long. It's like an upper middle grade, and it sounds... Sounds right up my alley. Every Bird a Prince by Jen Reese. The only time Erin Evers feels like herself is when she's on her bike racing through the deep woods. While so much of her life at home and at school is flying out of control, the muddy trails and the sting of wind in her face are familiar comforts. Until she rescues a strange magical bird who reveals a shocking secret, the forest kingdom is under attack by the vile Frostfangs an ancient foe, and the birds need Aaron's help to survive. Seventh grade is hard enough without adding bird champion to her list of after-school activities. Lately, Aaron's friends seem obsessed, obsessed with their crushes and the upcoming dance, while Aaron can't figure out what a crush should even feel like. Still, if she doesn't play along, they might leave her behind, or just leave altogether. Then the birds enlist one of Aaron's classmates, forcing her separate lives to collide. When her own mother starts behaving idly, Aaron realizes that the frost fangs, with their insidious whispers, are now hunting outside the woods. In order to save her mom, defend an entire kingdom, and keep the friendship she holds most dear, Erin will need to do something utterly terrifying. Be brave enough to embrace her innermost truth no matter the cost. So intrigued by that. And then Plum and Woo, The Puzzling Pearl by Lisa Syberry. This is the first book in the series. I think the second one comes out later this year. A mystery with style. Hannah Plum loves fashion and junk food. Patty Woo is obsessed with detective novels. They are not friends. They are stuck on a beachside holiday together, and when a hotel guest's pink wedding dress is stolen, the two girls are drawn into an ever-deepening mystery. Why is the wedding platter sending secret signals to an unknown guest? Who's leaving creepy wet diving relics in the hotel rooms? And could some long-lost famous pink pearls be at the heart of it all? If Plum and Wu want to survive the summer, they have to find the answers fast. But first, they'll have to survive each other. So, a summer story, a mystery, an unlikely friendship, so I am so excited for this one. And then Spineless by Samantha San Miguel. And this will be on my June anticipated releases because this is a June release, but it showed as available on Amazon for some reason, so I scooped it up. Wild boar, alligators, hammerhead, sharks. Can 12-year-old Algie Emsworth survive the swamps of South Florida? 
More importantly, can he survive his asthma attacks long enough to make a scientific discovery and fulfill his dream of becoming a real naturalist? With the help of Frankie and Lulu, intrepid Harris to the Hotel Harris so, Algy embarks on the adventure of a lifetime as he escapes certain death, discovers a brand new species, and goes head to head with diabolical thieves. All while a deadly and mysterious red tide ravages the beaches and a possible curse threatens to close down the Hotel Paraiso for good. Can Algy, Frankie, and Lulu save themselves, solve the mystery of the hotel's curse, and save their never before seen species? Sounds incredible. So excited about this. And one of my most highly anticipated releases is The Ghost Locket by Allison Rushby. The cover is so beautiful. It's a chapter heading illustration. I think there might be something that lives inside the house. I used to call them shadows, but now I'm older, I know they're not. 11 year old Lolly must return to London and break a promise she made to never again enter the historic building run by her beloved Aunt Elsie. However, with the busy Christmas season coming, help is required, and Lolly, with her guardian Freya, must return to the house of her nightmares. Inside, Lolly must face up to what she saw three years ago. Only she can make things right for two ghosts, one friendly and one decidedly not. But Freya can't see the things that Lolly sees. She doesn't understand what's at stake. Can Lolly convince Freya that her dreams are real and help the ghosts in time? And that looks like the two ghosts. I just love some spooky metal grays, so I'm so, I cannot wait to read this. So the rest of the stack is books that were in the anticipated release video, so I'm not going to read synopsis just to show you what I got. I got Best Frenemies Forever by Megan McCafferty. Sounds like an important story, friendship issue, bullying. I think that'll be a story a lot of kids can relate to, so I'm very excited. And then Crazy in Poughkeepsie, Poughkeepsie by Daniel Pinkwater. This is a naked hardcover. I might return this one. Um, it took forever to get here, and I didn't realize I need to start paying better attention. It's like a, it's really short. It was almost twenty dollars, and I think I don't think a book should be the higher end of the price point if it's not as long as those other books. Because I have books that are longer, and I've heard more about. And I understand sometimes why some are like that. Like um, indie books can be more expensive sometimes, and I understand. And, Completely agree, but I just don't know if I want to pay tw if twenty dollars is worth it for this right now. Illustrations, but just wanted to show it. And duet by Elise Broach. Two illustrations. And the Patron Thief of Bread by Lindsay Eager. 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 This just sounds right up my alley, and I'm so excited for this one. And the Map of Leaves by Yarrow Townsend. Just so beautiful. It sounds like such a great story. Can't wait to read this. And then Rebel Skies by Anne Salian. The upper middle grade story right up my alley. Sister to a Star by Eloise Smith. Very intrigued by this one. I'm excited. Zachary Ying and the Dragon Emperor by Saran J. Zhao. Again, sounds right up my alley. I like something I'm going to absolutely love and I cannot wait to dive in. And The Color of Hope by Ross McKenzie. I've loved all of his books that I've read and he just writes dark upper middle grade just so well. And I cannot wait to read a new book by him. And Wilder Than Midnight by Sari. Is it Carrie or Sari for now? None of those. <laughs> it's beautiful and sounds like such a great story. And Lions of Courage by Jennifer A. Nielsen. I think I have all of her middle grade books at this point and the series she has. I have like the first book. They just all sound so right up my alley with the historical fiction aspect. Um, the series, I don't know if it's historical fiction, I might be more fantasy, but it just sounds incredible. So glad it's out. And then Let the Monster Out by Chad Lucas. I love a good spooky metal grade. And this sounds terrific. And then Wild Seed Witch. Wild Seed Witch. And I guess the series name is Own Your Magic. This is Marty Dumas. So beautiful. I'm just so excited that this is finally out. I cannot wait. It's just ugh. And then lastly, The Marvelers by... Danielle Clayton. Uh, Solomon Shinani has got a blurb on the back. 
Reinventing the magic school trope is a tall order, but author Danielle Clayton is well up to the task. Filled with heart, wit, and humor, The Marvelous proves a tantalizing introduction to an exhilarating fantasy universe. So incredibly excited. <laughs> Happy it's finally out. Alright y'all, that's it for this video. Did you see any you're excited about? Um, have you read any of them? Like, did you like them? Did you not? Let me know in the comments. Today's shirt's from The Crow. The original Crow. It has a back to it. I'll edit it in the back. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you like to subscribe, I would love that. If you'd like to. And I'll see you in my next video.